I have the privilege to look at the functionality of the African court that is also known as the Arusha court. African region is known as African Union, comes from Organization of African Unity, founded back in 1963 by the heads of states and government in assembly in which the spirit and the desire at the moment was to liberate the entire continent from the colonial powers. Well, the founding fathers have got the spirit that is seen in the preamble of the entire legal document that puts the organization of African unity into existence. The urge and the need by that time was to decolonize African states. Well, this one became less urgent as many African states were decolonized and liberated from the colonial powers. About the need to have the court in place, let's go back to the meeting of Monrovia in 1979 that set up the pace for coming up with a draft, a draft work on which the charter known as African Charter on Human and People's Rights would be created. And in 1981, in Gambia, in the city of Banjul, known as Banjul Charter, a deal was struck by heads of states and government of Africa. In the sense, the signatures appended on the document on that material day and in 1986, that is roughly four years after, in an ordinary session held in Nairobi, in assembly, heads of states and government of Africa adopted the document known today as African Charter on Human and People's Rights. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the charter that puts all Africans at par before the law, the equality before the law, the freedom of the Africans, as well as many other things that pertain to the human rights and inherent fundamental freedoms that human beings require. There was no court by that time to which individuals would take their cases at the continental level, neither at the sub-regional level. In the year 2004, the same heads of states and governments gathered and approved a protocol that was adopted to create the African court. The court was created and initially was based in Addis Ababa, where the headquarter of the Organization of African Unity, here in after referred to African Union, is based. But some three years later, 2007, the court was moved to Arusha in the Republic of Tanzania. The 11 judges bench was established in Arusha with the mandate to spearhead the implementation, that is application, of the Charter on Human and People's Rights. And in that case, with limited jurisdiction, that is, one, 
advisory opinion that is the interpretation purpose and two for application of the charter within individual and respective sovereign member states all this is found or is founded within the stipulations of the protocol and this takes us to consider what is captured under article 5 access to the court who can access the court if not the member states and their governments the intergovernmental organizations and organs of the governments within those states under sub article 3 any other non-governmental organization ngo and individuals may be admitted to take its case and matters to the commission based in banjul well before the acceptability and admissibility of any matter of that nature one individual or ngo that is considered entitled must prove that it has exhausted local remedies that is within the national jurisdictions before the commission takes up any further consideration on the matters of litigation or contentious issues this is bringing the question of the effectiveness and uh, efficiency of the arusha based court arusha based court also presided over the so-called declaration of peace and reconciliation in burundi back in the year 2000 well this document has never since been implemented by the governments and it has been more or less ignored and neglected to an extent that it may bring other crises in burundi does this prove to us today that as things stand the arusha based african court is effective when it comes to the promotion and protection of human and people's rights over africa can we still approve that by the stipulations within the charter itself and within the protocol all the spirit and letter of the law have been followed by the arusha based court i have my personal doubts based on documentations as well as documentary evidence that we get we access through reliable sources this is a, a question of seeing the powers of the court being controlled or maneuvered in a way that the politics of the day overrides the rulings and the decisions of the court notwithstanding the appointment of the judges and the court officers this brings the jurisdiction and the competence of the said court into the evaluation of the effectiveness in terms of merits of the court and demerits of the court so much research is being carried out by different personalities law professors law researchers in regard to the effectiveness of this judicial structure that was created to liberate africa from colonial powers to begin with but all the same how much has it done 
what jurisprudence has this particular court or the very court has created along the space of time. Well, this may be the weakness or the strength of the African Union. The African Union was initiated with the spirit of spearheading more development, civilization and progress over the African continent. But has this been successful in enabling Africa to be independent from its exploiters, from other powers, other states and governments that still exploit African natural resources? These are all questions whose answers are yet to be found and established. But all the same, I admit that for these short synopsis and series, it suffices our knowledge about the African Union, the African Union Commission based in Addis Ababa, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights based in Banjul, the African Court based in Arusha, the Pan-African Parliament based in Dar es Salaam, as well as other institutions that embody the African Union as organization for the African continent. Still, we are far from the truth because as, fast, as much as individuals cannot access the services of the court and get justice, it shows that the court doesn't have supremacy over its state members. It is nothing to compare with the European Court of Human Rights because that other one has got binding decisions which of course we read and such binding decisions are felt by the state members. Whereas in the African scenario there is a tendency of not getting judicial authority over the executive and legislative authority. Politics carries or overrides judicial powers when it comes to this particular court that is supposed to promote and protect human and people's rights under the Banjul Charter. Thank you for watching, Peter here, and I expect you to come again and put your comments, questions down there and we'll be able to answer them. Thank you for watching. Bye bye for now. Remember to subscribe. Thank you and bye.